Welcome everybody back to Drawing with Michael Farah. Um, I often do the same scene in different media because I get different results. And um, this is, we're doing uh, ink washes today, which is nothing more than watered down ink. And it, I think it allows you the most values, you know, the lights and the darks and the mediums and all that of a particular uh, color. And what I've done here is I've sketched out what um, I did last week in just ballpoint pen or liner or whatever. And what I want to do, I want to go over this lightly with a white eraser and sort of have a ghost drawing here because this is an ink wash, it's not a pencil drawing. I may end up doing a pencil drawing of it one day, but I haven't yet. So anyway, I'm just wanting to lighten these lines some. And the thing with uh, an ink wash, sort of like working with pencil, is you start with your lightest and work to your darkest. And I was able to get this one done. And then I didn't get that one completed, so I have to work faster. But anyway, uh, I just used little Dixie cups or whatever these things are you, you put in your bathroom dispenser. And... Um, this ink is pretty strong. It's this is sumi ink, which is basically Japanese India. I mean, uh, yeah, India ink, black ink. And I'll show you how strong this is. Um, I'm going to put a little water in each one of these cups, and the more water you put, the lighter shade of gray you will get. So I'll start off with just a little bit here. And this brush is called a rigger because it does real thin lines real well. And you don't have to buy such a honking big bottle of ink. You know, you can get, get by with a little bottle like about this tall. But anyway, I'm gonna put the ink on the side here of the cup and just put the water to it and you see how dark that is already. And that, that was just a fraction of what I put on the side of the cup. I also always like to have piece of the same kind of paper I'm drawing on, doing the ink wash on, to test the gray here before I get to my drawing and so I find out, ooh, I should have tested this somewhere before. So <laughs> I don't have any unpleasant surprises. And I'm gonna to try to keep the ink in here pure, not water it down any. So anyway, if you put like one drop in this cup, you could put two drops in this cup and three drops in the next cup, and so forth. A lot of times, I will keep my brush in a cup of water, going to blow away here, and. Um, Side of it. Amber, that may be a little too much. The second window? Yeah, sorry. Oh, you're good. The AC's not running up the snuff, so Amber's got all these windows open. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna add some water to these and weigh them down a little bit. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, So again, this is an art, not a science, you know, trial and error. Um, but what I was going to say is, a lot of times, there's so much ink left over in the brush from doing this, I'll stick the brush in this, and that will be my lightest gray. It never hurts to start off a lot lighter than you think you will need because it's always easier to go darker. If you've ever done a watercolor, it's the same principle, light to dark. And you want to be working the largest areas to the smallest anyway. And <clears throat> 
I said last week, be patient with yourself and your, and your skill set as you master more and more, but also be patient with the drawing. You know, it, it's going to take a while to become proficient. So start with something simple and, and look for the basic shapes, look at the basic forms, look for the dark light patterns and go from there. I'm gonna mix these up. I'm trying for like eight different values. We'll see how I did. May end up they all look the same. If they do, I'm gonna either have to pour off some water or add more ink. Those three look pretty much the same. Um, but also, practice smart. And what I mean by that is really look for those basic shapes, the cones, the squares, the, the cubes, the triangles, the, the pyramids, whatever will work for you in that situation. And then incorporate those, then make it flow more. You know, like I did the ellipse last week and I made the flowers and I made the birds. Um, just look for the simple shapes. Also, uh, start simple and then work for the complex, which I think doing the basic shapes will, will help get you there. Make this one darker. I'm gonna test this one and see what we got going. It doesn't take a lot of this, particularly if you're working small. I do recommend that you do the, the last page in your drawing book, just in case you have any buckling of the paper it won't uh, affect what's behind it. Let's see what we got going now. Still too dark. All this up. Let me see what I got. You could do five drawings of the same subject and probably come up with five different, five totally different versions. Or like I do, you know, I'll do a pencil and then I'll do a charcoal and then I'll do an ink and then I'll do an ink wash. And since each one lends itself to different things, you'll get a different effect each time. You can hold the pencil differently. Remember I showed you, you can always hold it like this, you can hold it like this, you can hold it with just the middle finger and the thumb and incorporate the wrist and the elbow and the shoulder and get a lot smoother flowing line. I think that's a lot more uh, graceful and more interesting to look at than say a lot of little choppy lines like this. Go for a long graceful arc. Um, try different ways to draw the same things using different marks or values. And what I mean by that is you could do Just, you could draw a brick wall or part of a brick wall. Different ways you could make the bricks look exactly like bricks. You could indicate the bricks like I showed you, I think it was last week or week before last. And uh, you could, it's still a little too light. Um, you could try, one of those woodless pencils like I was using last week. They are a lot of fun. And you can't get bogged down in detail with them. And I don't care how bad the drawing is, putting a lot of detail in there is not gonna save or solve your problems. It's, it's the understanding, um, per perception of what you're looking at and recording on the paper, that's what's so important. That's why I keep stressing, you know, 
look for the basic shapes, look for the basic shapes, because once you get that going, try to get these in order, um, then you can move on to more complicated things or make more complicated things using those. I need something in between these two. Try this one. And why I say to try to use the same piece of paper as what you're washing on is because if I use another poundage or a different brand or something, you may have a different tooth, it's going to react differently than this 80 pound Strathmore that, that I find so versatile for so many different media. You won't get any nasty surprises if you're using this as your test paper. There's a lot of ink up in my bristles. You're staying consistent, in other words. Which is lighter, this one or that one? That one. <laughs> so if you go from the very, very lightest to black, you're going to have a lot of ranges going on. I'm going to get one more cup out and just put a little ink in it. So it'll be pure black. And make this next last one a little darker. Got a joke for you. Got two jokes for you. All right. These two drunk guys are sitting at a bar. One gets up, and the other drunk says, "Where are you going?" He said, "Well, I'm going to the restroom." He said, well, while you're there, go for me. So the drunk staggers off towards the restroom and he comes back. And uh, the drunk said, well, did you go for me? And the first drunk said, man, I forgot. So he gets up and he staggers back to the bathroom, comes back and sits down and says, you didn't have to go. Oh, Lord. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, this duck walks into a bar, and he hops up on the stool, and he says, give me a martini. So the bartender mixes up a martini and gives it to him. He said, will that be cash or charge? And he says, put it on my bill. <laughs> put it on my bill. <laughs> I, got a, I got a million of them. <laughs> so anyway, uh, now we're going to start the ink washing process. And just like in watercolor, it will teach you patience. So while this one's drying some, because you can't rush this process, if I were to put, let me get my practice sheet here again, I'll show you. If I were to put that shade there and then put the shade right here and want it to stay right there, look what's going to happen. See, I'm going to get a soft bleed right there. I'm not going to get a definite dark and then a, a medium dark or whatever. So depending on what you're doing, you know, if you want a soft tree line in the distance, that could be the trick. You could also tilt the paper some and work with it this way. So anyway, here we go. Drawing just takes practice and patience. Don't get frustrated with yourself if it doesn't come right away. Be kind to yourself. Don't be, be too harsh. You know. And just because you can't do one thing real well doesn't mean you can't draw. So I'm looking at this photograph, reference photograph, and the lightest thing I see in there 
is actually the sky back in here. And this, I don't know if that's a transformer or what, but then actually this real sunlit side of the brick is lighter than this garage door, which is white back there in the distance. So it depends on the light source, which is the sun obviously coming from the left. You got these strong shadows playing across this alley. I guess you can see this, but that's, that's my reference, what I'm working from. So let me go ahead and do this. And of course you can use different size brushes. I like the round brushes for this technique better than the flats or even the angles or the filberts or any of those other guys. This is going to be some of the sky. And when you're doing the sky, think of it this way. The clouds are sort of white, so you can use the white of the paper to help you the illusion along. And clouds tend to be darker on their bottom sides, so you can let this dry and then go back and darken some of these bottoms in. Now I got this light, I'm going to go ahead and do this white garage door. And I'm going to be rolling around on there. This right here, this brick building, because it's in direct sunlight. I drew a couple of these telephone poles more crooked than they are in the photograph just to break up all of these really straight vertical and diagonal lines. And again, this is an example of one point perspective. All of these lines are going back to a spot back in the distance like we went over a couple weeks ago. A little hair there. Don't think it was mine. Well, Amber, I had a little fun with Bo yesterday afternoon. Did you? <laughs> yes, I, unintentionally. <laughs> I, I had him out, you know, on our yard that's about like this. And uh, I had the, the black plastic bag out, you know, what I was doing, bent over, and neighbor lets their dog out. Well, that dog has no, no training. I mean, it just barks constantly. And no socialization, has never played with another dog. Just stays in the house or stays in the backyard. And even in the house, you can hear it barking. So anyway, it starts barking and Bo starts barking and I'm like bent over and I don't see what's happening. So he goes tearing down this hill. He pulls me down face first, down this hill. Fortunately, he didn't break anything or bruise anything or dislocate anything. But anyway, the neighbor, lady yelled, are you all right? I said, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. And uh, after, I don't know, an hour or so, she comes up to the house and uh, she said, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm fine, thank you. She said, if I had seen you and Bo out there, I wouldn't have let my dog out. I'm so sorry. I said, oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> I really felt like cussing her at the time, but uh -huh. I, I didn't. She's a, she's a nice lady but she she doesn't know anything about training the dog that's for sure <laughs> okay so that's the lightest i can go and um the next lightest would be probably the side of this building back in here and it's going to touch the sky so i'm going to let that dry a little bit 
so I don't have bleeds. So while that dries them, what I'm going to do, I'm going to work on this little alley seam with the vehicles in it real fast. And with the windows open, these should dry quicker. And I like this seam because of all the different roof lines and because it's got three trucks in it. And I, I think everybody likes trucks. You know, it's funny. I'm, I remember as a kid, my father had a 49 Chevrolet truck. And he said, you know, he never knew he had so many friends until he bought a truck. Because back then they weren't that common. And everybody wanted something to haul, furniture or gravel or straw or manure or something, you know. So he was always helping his buddies out. And uh, sorry, I didn't mean to scoot the camera around. But anyway, he always had a truck. And uh, so I, I am just amazed at all the people now who spend, what did you say, $60,000 on one of these quad cab brand new trucks. I'm like, at least. You know, that's just a fortune to me. But anyway, now they're very plentiful. And most of these trucks don't look like they haul bricks or dirt or manure or anything else that might get them dirty. <laughs> you know, it's a status thing, I think. You go out to somewhere like Texas and everybody's got a truck. And they will flip over in a heartbeat. I know that because I flipped one one time. Totaled it. Which is not a lot of fun. Particularly when I had to tell my father since it was his truck. <laughs> I was a teenager. <laughs> but a guy had run me off the road. And um, I pulled over and looked at, at the truck and um, the right wheel was bent from me run, getting run off the road. So I was trying to rush home and tell him, you know, this is way before cell phones or anything, you know, that the guy ran me off the road and bent the wheel. So I'm cruising along at a pretty good clip and I went around the curve a little too fast myself and um, I ran off the road. Well, unbeknownst to me, there was a rock wall hidden behind all these weeds and I hit the rock wall. Once I hit that rock wall, it just went over on the top like that. And the truck came to a rest in the middle of a, a hump and curve in the road and the motor was still running. So I had to crawl back in and cut the motor off because gas was leaking out. And uh, so I walked down to this little country store, called home and said, you better call the state police. I got my motor. I just wrecked the truck. She said, are you all right? I said, yes, I'm okay. So they came up and got me. They called a wrecker. They cops and everybody comes up. But anyway, you gotta be dri careful driving a pickup truck because they do flip. And two-door Jeeps are even worse. Most of the Jeeps you see now are four-door. Actually, my when his stepdaughter drives a four-door Jeep all the time, and she just loves hers. She went from a Dodge Charger, which was too much car for her, to a Jeep four-door. She's like 5'2 and maybe 95 pounds, just a little tiny thing. Oh, she's got a hop in that thing. Oh, man. <laughs> Can you imagine her in a Charger? <laughs> I mean, they're like race cars mm -hmm. on the street. Of course, the gas mileage proves that too. It amazes me. Here we are in 2021, and Detroit still can't develop a car that gets any good gas mileage.
more telephone poles. I'm just using the edge of my photograph as a ruler here. Anything that will straight, anything that is straight will work. I can see right now that I should not have drawn in the right hand border because I'm doing myself an injustice. I've cut off where I want to go, so I might as well go ahead and erase that part now. What was that? <laughs> oh, got a story for you. I went to New York, and you know, in New York, in our big cities, you're not supposed to look at people. You know, you're just supposed to sort of look down and just ignore the other people around you. Well, it's kind of hard to do, but anyway, um, there was this guy, and he was standing on a corner. And he had the Reynolds Wrap cone hat on. And he was going 19. He'd step off the curb, back up on the sidewalk, 19. End of the street, back up on the curb. Kept doing it. So I had to stop and watch what he was doing. I'd never seen anybody do this before. So anyway, this went on for a while. And another tourist watching him and he steps off the curb and gets hit by a cab and gets killed. So the guy with the cone hat steps off the curb and goes 20, steps back on the sidewalk, 20, steps back on the sidewalk. <laughs> they don't have a lot of heart in the big cities, folks. <laughs> If you live in a big city, sorry. I was fascinated with New York. I didn't want to have to come home. And it truly is a city that never sleeps. Yeah, I've always wanted to visit, but I've never been. We went up right after 9-11, and it was heartbreaking. Because everywhere you went, you saw all these photographs. Have you seen so-and-so? Have you seen so-and-so? And they had, you know, where the Twin Towers had been fenced off, but it was still smoldering. And this was in December from September. And uh, you could see the trucks coming out, you know, with all the rubble that all the cops and firefighters had sifted through. And all the time they were doing it, they were getting cancer cells, which is another story unto itself. But anyway, if you ever get the chance, go. It's a fascinating city. So I'm just drawing in the main points of this thing that interests me. And that's something about drawing. You know, if there's something at what you're looking at that doesn't interest you, don't put it in. You know, nobody's going to know the difference. If you don't like that hedge or that bunch of flowers, leave them out. Draw what you like. Generals win battles because they know where to pick the best battlefields to have the battles. Drawers know how to have good drawings because they know what to draw and what to leave out. So think of it that way. I will say this, if you draw the same thing all the time and don't challenge yourself, you're never going to improve. You have to draw different things before you get better. What I mean by that is, you know, if you like birds or flowers or something, start off with birds and flowers. Nothing wrong with that. But then move on to landscapes or a town scene or buildings like I've showed you or people like I've showed you or anything. You know, you can take those basic shapes and turn them into like I said, anything you can imagine. 
Amber was telling me that she's a certified bus driver. You know, you, you could do a bus. You could do any number of things. And, I'm make, and I am making my way down this hill, believe it or not. There's a couple tree trunks going here. And again, I'm going to have to go over my pencil lines with a white eraser to sort of lighten these. I don't care how light of a touch I have, I, I still have strong hands. I was watching this series on Netflix about the universe, which was very interesting. I wanted to take astronomy when I was in uh, college, and they had a, uh, one of those big telescopes and everything, but um, I, I never could work it in my schedule. I ended up taking geology, which was uh, not as interesting. Yeah, I took geology, and I was not too Final, the final consisted of a piece of paper with a hundred numbers on it and every table in the room covered with rocks with numbers and you had to go through and identify a hundred kind, different kinds of rocks. Uh, <laughs> like, you when I lived in Virginia I knew a bunch of foresters because their local college turned out a lot of nurses and a lot of forest majors, forest rangers. And um, so anyway, the forest rangers had to know every kind of tree in the forest. And there's like thousands of different breeds of tree in the forest up there. You know, there's hundreds of kinds of oak. And um, they had to know them all. I'm like, geez. Of course, now all that stuff you can just click on your phone and say, what's this tree? And it will tell you. But then they didn't know that. Something I never understood is, why did they make you memorize the periodic table? Uh, I mean, that's just like busy work. I hear all the chemistry teachers out there now, oh, it's important. People should know it. I'm like, you should have left it up on the wall and the just yeah. use it as reference. No, use it well. Nobody needs to know that stuff in and out, upside down and backwards. Except maybe, except maybe chemistry teachers. Okay, last truck in this thing. I'm almost done. So anyway, have fun with drawing. Don't stress out over it. Next week, I will be drawing with ink, literally, just the straight black ink. And you'll be amazed at how many different values I can get with that. And I did go by the storage unit where all my studio is <laughs> stored right now. and. Um, I looked and looked and I could not find my big portfolio full of drawings that I was going to bring and show you, things I've done in the past and say, see, this is what it's capable of and that, that house I spent like all those hours on and then the woman laid the wet acrylic painting on. Yeah. But anyway, um, maybe in the future I'll find it and show you.
But again, what interested me in this picture is one, the one point perspective, and two is the shadow play. Because if you look, some of these houses on the left are in shadow and some of them are in bright sunlight. And all the ones on the right are in bright sunlight and you've got all these shadows cast across this alley. So, you know, different things can draw you to different compositions and it's all good. You know, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as it works for you, it's good. If you like the subject, you'll do a better job at it. If you don't like it, you won't be as interested and the drawing won't be as successful, I guarantee you. Unless you're like a commercial artist and are getting paid to do something, it's just not gonna happen. I had drawing classes like at eight o'clock in the morning. Well, eight o'clock in the morning is like the middle of the night for a college student. And uh, they wanted you to come in and be all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and creative, and I, I found it very hard to do. So I was finally able to get some classes that were later in the day, and I did a lot better with those. I'm just gonna sketch in where some of these shadows go. Make my life a little easier when I go to ink. There's shadows in this photograph that, of things that aren't even in the photograph, which is another thing that fascinates me. You know, what's causing this shadow? I think I've said it before, anytime you can interest the people enough to look at your photographs, um, look at your <laughs> drawings, I'm sorry, drawn from photographs or from sitting in the outdoors somewhere, that's 90% of the battle. I used to do a lot of outdoor shows, and uh, people would come by and look at my drawings, and it's sort of sniff or huff or something to their their mate, and they'd say, "Well, that's just a pencil sketch." And I'm like, "Well, I spent more time on this pencil drawing than on some old paintings I've done." So, you know, put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Amber, do you see that large white eraser? I lose stuff quicker than anybody. I'll just use this one. Okay. That's what I thought. It's too heavy to blow, have blown off the table. Last week I was running errands before class. This week I'm going to be running them after class. I got to go get gas for my mower and uh, make a quick Kroger run. Okay, let's go back to this other guy, this guy. So now we can work on this building with this value of ink and make sure. It's the value I want. Yeah, that worked fine. So, reference. That came close. I hit it with my knuckle. <laughs> Have a lap full of ink there in a second. Some ink is waterproof, so be careful. You know, if you tend to be uncoordinated, uh, you may want to hold the ink in your other hand as you ink so you don't accidentally knock it over like I almost did that one. I do that with the pure ink like I'm going to use next week. If something is not dark enough doing this technique, it's okay to go back over it and darken it some more.
And remember, these transformers here have all these wires, and these telephone poles have all these wires running from them. And I'm not about to try to do it with a brush, even a rigger. So I'm going to let it dry good, and then I'm going to go in with a pen and make those little skinny lines. This is darker, so I'll leave it. This brick face is as the same value as down here. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Oops, I take that back. I've already done it. Just a little bit darker yet. And you'll notice as the things get closer to you, particularly on the left in this one, they will be getting darker because they are closer. Because we're assuming that you're standing right here, or I'm standing right there, or whoever took the photograph. Try not to run into that, so I just did. I think the soft, flexible brushes work best in this. The, the white bristle ones, which are meant for oil paint, won't work at all. They're just too stiff. I'll change my mind here. There's like two dashes of sun up here on the top of this building, so I'm going to go ahead and put them in about this value, which may seem very dark, but the whole side of this building is going to be in shadow, except for what I'm doing right now, so this will actually be very light once I get the other done. There's a lot of things happening in this drawing and photograph that I honestly can't tell what's happening. It could be a post, it could be a doorway, it could be um, a down gutter, um, I'm not sure. But anyway, there's a lot of things I left out just because I couldn't tell what it was. Anytime you can simplify a drawing, that's going to help you out too. Sometimes we can just get so bogged down in detail that we just spoil the drawing for the viewer. I'm going to let this dry in a minute and move on to the other one. I was thinking that I had left that portfolio of drawings out so I would not put it away in storage and not be able to get to it. But I looked in my studio the other day and I didn't see it. Of course, sometimes I suffer from what they call male pattern blindness. Mm -hmm. yep. I can't find things in the refrigerator.
what I'm doing here is kind of correcting what I should have done before, which is called keeping a wet edge. So instead of like going from here and then jumping up to here, if I'd worked this whole thing up like this and kept this edge wet, I wouldn't have had to sort of go back over and make it the same value or try to make it the same value. Since it's the same material and the same facet and the same plane, it's going to be the same value. Okay, set that guy aside. Go to this one. Okay, if it's white in the photograph, just leave it white in your ink wash. So, up here in this corner is white. This is a white door right here. Uh, this is a white building right here, which I almost obliterated and hardly see it. <laughs> Um, this is a white house or garage. Um, this is a whitish roof. Let's see one thing I gotta change real fast. Got two roofs right there. Well, one roof and one eave. And this house here is extremely white but it's got a strong cast shadow. This is taking maybe three, four o'clock in the afternoon when the shadows are longer. So here we go. I watched the movie on um, Netflix the other day, which I had never seen. I'm not sure if it was Netflix or, um, no, it wasn't Netflix. It was um, TCM. McCabe and Mrs. Miller, Warren Beatty and Julie Christie. And Julie Christie is, is one of those women that I could just sit and look at. She doesn't have to act. She doesn't have to read the phone book. I just could just sit and look at her. I just think she's dreamy. <laughs> it, was, it was a Western, and it was very good. Kind of raunchy in places, but that's okay. It was, it was directed by um, Altman. I can't think of his first name right now. But anyway, he, he's the one who did the, the movie MASH and the movie... Nashville, and he's famous for having, you know, people talk in the movies like they do in real life. You know, they, several of them talk at the same time, and um, it's sort of hard to follow, but anyway, um, it was very good, very well done. McCabe and Mrs. Miller, he was a gambler and she was a madam. And they hooked up in this little tiny mine in town and started developing it into a profitable business for themselves and for everybody else. They made, you know, they had businesses, they had blacksmith shops and uh, buggy rentals and all sorts of sideline businesses. And um, it just turned into quite a good place until. Uh, the lawyers showed up and big business wanted to come in and buy them out. They didn't want to sell. A couple, couple of the light spots in this road up here. Gesundheit. about all the German I know. Do you know why people used to sniff snuff back in the 1800s, 18th century, I mean? I don't know, my nanny did. Okay, well, they would take a pinch of snuff and uh, sniff it, 
and it would make them sneeze. Well, when you sneeze, your heart doesn't beat, and they thought that would put you a second closer to being with God. That was probably some tobacco company uh, BS, but anyway, <laughs> that's what I read or heard somewhere along the line. You know, you live long enough, you hear lots of stuff and read a lot of stuff, and if it's not on the internet, you tend to believe it, unless it's in like National Enquirer or something like that. I'll never believe Elvis had monkey, Martian babies with aliens. <laughs> and yes, viewers, if you're out there and you believe that Elvis did, I'm sorry if I burst your bubble. This line here is actually a little bit darker. And this next line is very dark. Cast shadow. I better let that dry some. Let me, uh, got another one here I want to work on. And, um, you know, this, this technique lends itself very well for detail work. Like I said last week, in that gallery I saw one in the middle of a wall of a whole gallery full of paintings, and I was wondering what it was doing there until I got up on it. I thought it was a photograph, and uh, sure enough, it was an ink wash. This photograph was taken out the windshield, and this, of course, is the wiper blade and the hood and the dashboard, and I'm going to leave that out, trust me. I'm also going to leave out the yellow line. I'm just going to make this road a little narrower, like it's a scenic byway, which means... Uh, Maybe a tractor up a up around that bend. Don't go too fast. Amber, do you know where that natural spring is over on um, Eleven East? Uh, it comes out, that, and, and would yeah, water all I'm like, I wouldn't drink that for love nor money. You know, there could be a dead squirrel up the, you know, up in the woods up in there, yeah, right in the creek. Jug's getting water. Okay, so anyway, here we go. Another fallen down type barn. And again, if your drawing skills are off a little bit in one of these, it's not going to matter because. There's probably not a straight line in this. Everything's sagging and about to fall down anyway. See the sky through some of these boards here. Don't get too caught up in the detail.
I think this is just the dark part of the bar barn beyond like this little picket fence and I'm putting in here. Here goes the one point perspective road. Oh, that wind does help cool it off because it is hot out there. It was 82 or something yesterday. She with that wind blowing, I could get on my back porch and take me a good on that. I bet. You don't sunbathe, do you? Yeah. Oh, I'd be this uh, Be careful. I wear sunscreen, though, but. Yeah, well, that's. I don't go out there like I was when I was younger without nothing. My sweetie is a melanoma survivor. Yeah, I have sunscreen. Especially if I'm out like on the lake or at the beach. Another telephone pole. Usually leave telephone poles out because they, they date your uh, pictures. You know, if you leave modern things out like that, people can look at it and say, oh, well, that could be you know, a long, long time ago. But uh, telephone poles sort of so, well, it's semi-modern. But it's also a good perspective trick. Okay, enough of that. I'm going to be quite as energetic on my racing this time. I like to try to cut my grass on Mondays, get it over with, and uh, I think I've, I've been a trendsetter in our neighborhood. I think everybody's been doing it on Mondays now. Yeah. Except a couple people up further up the block. Okay, in this photograph, the sky has got obvious color. It's blue. It's lighter blue back here. So I'm gonna use a bigger brush and that lightest gray, I'm gonna leave get all that erasure stuff out of there. Because if you don't, it'll leave a little black mark where you probably don't want a little black mark. That feels like one of those breezes you get when you're on the beach. Yeah.
actually watering this down a little bit more. So these are the gaps between the boards where you can see the sky. If you work really wet and your paper buckles, what you can do once the piece is dry and you are finished, you can uh, lay it on a counter upside down and spritz it with a Windex bottle with clear water in it and maybe lay a cutting board or a heavy book or something on it and that should flatten it back out. And if you have it matted and framed, that will also flatten it out and everything will be kosher again. This barn wood is pretty bleached white in spots. As are some of these fence pickets. All this is in shadow. It's, it's pure black. It really is. Now on the sides of the rows, I've got some um, weed type things happening. Broom straw or something. And it's pretty light. Remember, you can always go darker, but you can't get it off the paper once it's there. There's a couple of white spots in this roof. The roof is showing the sky right there because it's missing. I don't know if you can see it, but my paper is really buckled now because it's wet. It's okay. It's all good. Okay. Let that one dry. Go back to this guy. Hopefully he's dry. And so this is a different building from Actually, that was the same building, I'm sorry. That was actually this shade. And that one mixed, I think. Got two pipes here of some sort. So basically, I just have to do them, or in between them, rather. You know, we were talking about um, starting classes after next week sometime and since I get my shoulder done on the 11 you want to just wait until a couple of weeks after the 11th to do yeah we'll probably start up in June okay first Thursday in June yeah okay hopefully I will be far enough along in physical therapy that I can drive myself and function Okay. Uh, this is a still a little bit lighter than that, so I'm going to go back to this guy. But you know, if you had some baby jars with screw lids or something and you really like this, you could mix up your ink in those and, and put the lids on and keep it for months and really turn out some nice ink washes. 
I just tend to dump mine down the sink. This is actually a little darker than that, so I'm going to go back and make that this dark. No, I'll take that back. I'm going to do the next darkest. This guy. Trying not to lay my finger on wet ink. So basically, what you're working with is tinted water. And you can end up with like a little puddle like that. If that really, really bothers you, what you can do is take the corner of a paper towel, just the very, very edge of it, and suck some of that up. And it'll all be gone. You know, if you were working a full sheet like this, you probably never use this size brush unless you're doing weeds or grasses or something, maybe skinny limbs in a tree, but working smaller pieces like this, this works great. And it's all what you're comfortable with. There's actually some trees above this building right here, so I'm just going to suggest some foliage. There's plenty of air holes for the birds to find their homes. three trees. Odd numbers. Okay. This is a car or a minivan or something back there in the distance. I'm going to shave him in. And there's a box or a trash can or something sitting over here to the left so it balances it off. We went out um, Tuesday night and looked at a house and came home. And yesterday morning, she was gonna take the dog to the dog park and she backed out and halfway down the driveway the tire was her front right tire was flat. So we called AAA to come fix it. And uh, she thought she'd run over a nail. And the guy looked at it and said, This is toast. And he showed us the wires were coming out of it. And I said, Yeah, you know, we were out at interstate speed last night. We really lucked out that we didn't have a blowout. Yeah. And uh she went by this morning and, and got one put on because she, she didn't have a real spare. She just had one of those donuts. And it was probably as old as the car, which was 21 years old. So the guy said, well, be real careful. And she said, I will be. People are so nice around here. This is the edge this awning
and make this a little bit darker, actually brick. Comes down here like this. And across. Again, this is one point perspective. All these angle lines go to the vanishing point back there. Okay. Trying to decide what's next in value and where I can lay my finger without too much mishap. Maybe I can do this little window here. This little window here has a frame that's dark, like this. No, it's just these little, I call them piddling things, that, that can help make a, a drawing more interesting. This transformer is just very dark. This one's got a couple white spots in it. Not where you'd think. Pretty strange. This one's light on this side. You'd think this would be light on that side, but it's a light in the middle. You know, you got to observe. remember as a kid, a uh, transformer on the telephone pole out in front of our house, we lived in the middle of the block, blue. And um, the people who lived west of us, uh, the guy worked for Virginia Power, and they had a fireplace. So they had three houses of people over, they had kids, and uh, it was a cold miserable night it was sleeting and just bitter cold well my uncle worked for the company and he got called out to fix that transformer and he's up on top of the pole in the sleet and the cold and the guy who pushed a pencil all day comes out and offers him some advice well my uncle had been there long enough he told him what he could do with his advice <laughs> So Ralph came back into the house and stayed with us around the fireplace. <laughs> left, left my uncle to do his job the way he knew how to do it. <laughs> my uncle, who was named Jerome, was a—I I really like him. He was—he was a very curmudgeonly old guy. I mean, he made. Andy Rooney looked like, uh, remember Andy Rooney off of yeah. 60 Minutes? He made Andy Rooney look like the life of the party. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever my parents had to go out of town or something, I stayed with them. Because the woman was my mother's oldest sister. And um, we always watched the Ed Sullivan show. And they ate TV dinners. My parents didn't eat TV dinners, so I thought it was a big treat. We sit there, you know, and it's all we introduce somebody, and Drum didn't want to see him. Who would want to see that? And he'd turn the sound down and go back and sit in his chair because he didn't have remotes. And they'd get rid of that, and then the, the Chico Nino or whatever that Italian mouse was, and I didn't want to see that. <laughs> Out of an hour show, Jerome may have watched two people. <laughs> Why do they have them on there? What do they want to see them for? 
they're has-beens, they're washed up, you know, they're nobodies. <laughs> it's just it's constant. It's funny. This has got a black pipe or something. If you're not sure about the paper being dry and it's hard to tell, what you can do so you don't have nasty bleeds and blooms and things you can't correct, lay the back of your hand, this part right here, on the paper and if it feels cool it's still damp so give it a little bit longer to dry i've got dark down there that's this telephone pole i still haven't figured out if that's the edge of a building or some greenery it's not really straight so i guess it's greenery something climbing up the wall maybe It's funny, my uncle liked to fish, and he had a boat, and he got, had a place out on the river, and his wife would always paddle the boat, and she could do it soundlessly, and not make a, you know, a drip of water off the paddle, and he, he demanded complete silence. You couldn't speak, you couldn't rattle anything around in your tackle box, I mean, he was a real stickler for being quiet, so he didn't take many kids out, <laughs> but anyway, um, I always thought that was strange that she did all the paddling and he did all the fishing. I guess that's what makes for a happy marriage, right? Yeah, it's all about balance. <laughs> yeah. Sharon. But he was into beagles. And I, that's one dog I don't like because they bark all the time. But he and some buddies had a beagle club and you know they'd go out in the woods and set their dogs free and I don't know they'd go chase raccoons or something or other and they'd listen to the dogs bark and it was like music to their ears and I'm like it's a bunch of dogs barking you know get over it <laughs> I just never saw the, the beauty in it like he did Okay, I've jumped the gun a little bit and jumped into some blacks here, but I need to establish some darks so I can go back and finish off the, the mid-tones. This one's about done, except for the shadows and the piping, a couple of details. Let him dry. Go to this guy. And I think I've mentioned it before. If you have trouble seeing the values in a black and white, I mean, in a color photograph, run it through a copier and make a black and white copy of it. That's your values right there. It, it just simplifies your life a whole, whole lot. Well, these shadows up here are pretty dark. I'm going to go ahead and lay them in. And even the shadows of the bushes are sort of straight edged. There's 
one skinny little line right here, and I hope I can do it. Hold my breath. Not bad. It's a keeper. Okay. Too dark. Sometimes you mix, mix up the value you need right here on your test paper. This is the shadows cast by the overhanging eave on this white house. If I was painting this, I would probably not do gray. I'd probably do something like uh, a light, like blue, just to make it look a little cleaner. Well, today would be a perfect day to put my top out when I'm driving my van. <laughs> uh -huh. Like I said, i got to fill up my gas cans for the more, and they won't fit in the car. Turn all that dark out and go with a little lighter value, second, second darkest. Right here on this white house. under E of this house. This is shadow but it's very, very light compared to the other things on the side of the house. Sort of like cast shadow. I mean, uh, uh, dappled sunlight is what I meant to say, sorry. Sort of like that. This roof is darker than what we've been doing. Looked at a house the other day and they had a chimney 
that was propped up with a piece of steel. Inside, they had closed off the fireplace. They had a basement. But only entrance was outside, so they went outside and then down the steps. And it had been a crawl space. So what they had done, they had dug like pig paths about this wide to put, you know, like the hot water heater and maybe get to the fuse box back in that corner and the rest of it was covered up. All, it was all dirt covered up with plastic. I've never seen that done before, ever. That's weird. Very. It definitely can't pass an inspection, Joe. Huh? Probably won't pass an inspection. It was an older house. I mean, like, 70 years old or something. I've, I've said before that windows at a distance appear to be black, and you can see right here, that one's almost black, and that one's a very dark gray because the sun's hitting it. I'm gonna let that dry around before I do it. This one reads as really, really dark gray beside that telephone pole so I can do it. Part of this bumper here is reading dark, even though it's chrome. Chrome just picks up everything around it. I will do the wheel, which is chrome, in the same value. and make it bigger than I need. Uh, the bumper right there is dark. This bush is semi-dark, so we'll go with this value. If you vary the strokes or the marks you make, you can indicate different textures, different bushes, different materials like brick or center block or whatever. I'm not sure what this thing is, but it's different than the two beyond it, so they will be inked in using different strokes. It's always best to pull the brush stroke towards yourself unless you were really experienced. On that E there, I, I pulled it away from myself, but I've been painting for a long, long time. This is basically a combination of drawing and painting. This is a tree beyond that in the photograph. It's a red pickup. It would be a medium gray in this drawing here in a minute. So we've got this tree, which looks like it's 
on his last legs, or maybe it's the fall. Draw some. All of this back here is trees, all trees. I'm going to turn this upside down so I can ex access it a little easier. Making a little different value along with the different mark will help separate them from this first bush I put in here. Making another shade of gray here. Got nine mixed up and I don't, still don't have enough. <laughs> picky, 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 right? Gonna be close work right here. I got three telephone poles almost touching. Leave some air holes here. A lot of telephone poles in this photograph, but I'm using them as a compositional thing. Got all these vertical buildings, why not do some vertical skinny telephone poles? This guy dry some. Back to the barn.
and I'm getting tree seeds or something in my hair. <laughs> pollen. That pollen is crazy right now. <laughs> I got like wrought iron on my outside of my porch. Uh -huh. And like it's black or whatever, so you can see all the yellow. Mm -hmm. Not wood, but this year I have not been bothered by allergies too badly. No, I haven't either, but I've been, ever since about February, I've been taking Zyrtec every night, like religiously, so. I'm going to go ahead and do the darks in this barn. This is going to make my life a little easier, I hope. I heard on the news last night, or have I, have I told you, did you see the thing about uh, an Amazon warehouse coming to Bristol? Uh-uh. Talking about trying to find a house to buy and traffic increasing on 81, it's going to be nightmarish. Uh -huh. Two casinos. Yep. The hard rock, and then the hair is on that pinnacle. People will be coming in by tour bus. Mm -hmm. Now this barn has got some skinny little lines in there that I'm going to have to make with a fine line marker. It just, unless I used like a one bristle brush or something, they're just too fine. I can't do them. This is the black end of the barn where there's no light at all. But it's funny, there's I don't know if it's like a gap between the boards or a downspout or what, but there's a definite white thing, hard edge, angled across this black area. So I'm going to put her in there. Let the viewer try to figure out what it is.
good to hear trains. I grew up in a railroad town. One thing I miss. When you go to clean up today from your inking experience, um, wash your brushes gently in cold water until they run, the water runs clean and then you'll be okay. You don't need to use soaps or detergents or anything on them. Just rinse them in cold water real good and they'll be fine. What I'm doing here is leaving some of that growth of bushes and grasses and things showing right there against that black. It's like one cedar tree right there. Sort of dark. They're the ones short shaped sort of like a flame. There's one right here too. Shadow of something here, it's darker. Well, I'll hit the right gray here eventually. But hopefully you can see the um, progression I'm making in in this um, series of ink washes. Go back to that alley scene. Okay. Where I put the pure black on right here and here and here. These two are still wet. I'm work on this transformer a little bit. I find this relaxing. I mean, I think you can get a lot of detail in without, you know, pulling your hair out. Sure what this boxy thing is right here but it's white on the front and gray on this side because that's the shadow side and this is gray down here gray underneath I used to do a lot of oil washes, which is oil paint thin down like this. And I'd get this sort of look like this, which looks like a watercolor, and uh, even more so when you got color. And um, I'd have them listed as oil washes, 
and uh, on the little price cards, and people come up to me and they'd say, these are unusual watercolors. And I'd say, well, thank you, but they are actually oil washes. And they'd say, what's that? And I'd explain it to them, and they'd, I, don't, I don't think some of them ever understood what it was. But all you had to do was thin down all paints with paint thinner to the consistency of water. And it was like a watercolor, except once it was dry, it was waterproof. And it didn't buckle your paper like watercolor or ink wash has a tendency to do. I've tried just about everything out there. I have not done a lot of encaustic, and encaustic is probably one of the oldest forms of painting that dates back to the pyramids, and it's a combination of wax and paint. And um, you can get some beautiful effects with encaustic. Almost all of it nowadays is mixed with oil paint. But um, my last wife, who was an artist, had a book about, I don't know, about that thick, say 150, 200 pages, and every page was a different technique using encaustic. So it's very, very, very um, versatile. Okay, this is a telephone pole. It's going to be darker on this side. And since it's organic, it's not going to be a straight shadow. That little whitish thing right there is actually a sign. Probably says no parking, but I can't read it, so I'm just going to leave it blank. This thing is the framework I-beams that hold up these heavy transformers. I get one whole one done and then I'll go back and work on the cross pieces. Now we do the cross pieces. Telephone poles. Another awning, different shape. It's got like a white band on it right there.
that pine is pretty dark if they were this gray. And the front is just as dark as the top. I'm doing this. These pipes, these uprights here. Oh, are almost the same value all the way up, since they're in shadow. Do you hear voices? Yeah, I thought you going over there and looking out the window. I can't tell where they're coming from either. But to tell these pipes from the wall, since it's not that great of a contrast in the value, I'm going to let them dry and then I'm going to go back and put some of those steel bands on them that, you know, they they curve around and then anchor into the masonry, help hold them up there. Uh, another door, another gray. Maybe it's the H back people up in the attic or something. We're hearing them through that vent right there. Okay, still have to do all the shading of the road. We can do a couple more things to these transformers here. have to make this part of the awning darker than that. They just blend right into one another. Watercolor is dry lighter than when you put them on. I have not found that with ink necessarily. Until it's the side and that's the front or the top row. Okay. So. Back here is one shadow. And there's a shadow going up the side of this building. Not sure what from. I'll do that sometimes when somebody does something 
stupid in traffic, but they were right in front of me. <laughs> My sweetie's afraid I'm gonna get blown away one day. <laughs> I know, you never know these days. Huh? You never know these days what people will do. Yeah. But you can bet a lot of people around here are packing. Mm -hmm. This is going to be getting a little darker for a couple of reasons. Two, it's getting closer to us. And, ooh. Way too dark. Should have tested that on my paper. My bad. See if I can't water it out right here. This close to finish line, I hate to, to ruin it. But it's closer to us, and it appears to just be different kind of pavement in the photograph. But again, it's helping that illusion of here, there, and way back there along. You know, once this is matter and frame the edges can be squared up it doesn't matter we're sort of raggedy looking like that i'm going to get a pen must have dropped some ink there <laughs> they turned that into a bird or something oh let me draw you a quick bird. I always think my test papers are interesting too. Yeah. But, you know, beginner drawers will always do what I call the flying M's. They'll say that's a bird. Well, if you think about a bird as having a body and a head and a wing that goes out this way, there's its tail, and then a wing that comes out this way. I think that looks a little bit more like a bird than the flying M. Yeah, I'm guilty of the flying M. <laughs> so let me go back and add just a few details to this guy. This, this is still wet. Looks sort of like Frankenstein's laboratory, but other than that, I think it's an interesting composition. Let's see what's telephone poles and what's not. This is one. This guy has one. Oh, I gave you homework last week to look at power lines and determine if they sag more in the wintertime or the summertime. What did you come up with? Winter. Actually, it's summer. Oh. Because they're hotter, they expand, and they sag under their own weight. In the wintertime, they're colder and more brittle, and they will straighten out. Here's some of those steel bands to hold this 
height to this building. I help the illusion along that this is a tube, not just a lighter stripe on this building or something. I can finish these other two next week and then start on the the one that I really like to do using the sticks, twigs. I'll keep looking for the examples in my studio. Hopefully I'll find them. But hopefully this gives you an idea of some of the possibilities of doing an ink wash drawing. I think that's a keeper. Thank you very much. I will see you next week. Keep up your good work, and I'll try to keep up my end.